This video is entitled The Secret Police File on Wallace Simpson and right at the very start you may be thinking if this is a secret how come I know about it? Well that's a good question. The answer is that it was secret that the file was declassified in January 2003 although the declassification probably only happened after the death of the Queen Mother, wife of King George VI, mother of Queen Elizabeth II and sister-in-law of King Edward VIII. That declassification may have been deliberate and so uh, they waited for the Queen Mother to die. Now, as a child, I learned that the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, could not stand any mention of her uncle Edward as he had failed to do his duty to the Crown. Now, the Queen doesn't actually pass on her innermost thoughts to me directly. That's something I got out of a book and the book may have been correct or it may not have been correct. However, uh, should you see the Queen, then you could ask Say you heard this on a video on YouTube, and then we would know. From January 1934, Edward, the Prince of Wales, heir to the throne of the United Kingdom, was in an adulterous relationship with Wallace Simpson. Wallace Simpson was from the United States and was married to Ernest Aldridge Simpson, who was also born in the United States, but to a British father and an American mother. Ernest Simpson was a business person and quite well off, but like many at the time, not so well off as he had been before the 1929 stock market crash. The Prince of Wales had embarked on a number of affairs, mainly with married women, which appears to have been accepted as the done thing. However, Given the emerging threat from Germany, as well as the potential security risk of blackmail or some other threat, the special branch of the British police kept an eye on Wallace Simpson and the company that she was keeping, which was quite revealing. And this is the secret file. This uh, ended up in the public records office where you can see it uh, now if you are interested. In this photograph we can see the Prince of Wales on holiday with Wallace Simpson at Kitzbühel in Austria in early 1935. It was around this time that the police decided that they were going to keep an eye on Wallace Simpson. Uh, she was a person of sufficient interest uh, to them for the reasons I've just mentioned. And they quickly found out that she had another love interest. In June 1935, a special branch superintendent wrote to the police commissioner, contact with the Simpsons is being maintained, but the identity of Mrs. Simpson's secret lover has not yet been established. When the person was identified, it turned out to be Guy Marcus Trundle, a married man from York, then resident in Mayfair, one of the most expensive districts of London. Guy Marcus Trundle was a car salesperson and vehicle engineer employed by Ford. At the time, as people who bought cars were very, very wealthy, uh, so therefore they would probably want to buy a car of somebody of their social standing. The report describes Guy as a very charming adventurer, good-looking, well-bred and an excellent dancer. In other words, he was just like me. Apparently, he boasted that every woman falls for him and said that he was happy to accept money and gifts from Mrs. Simpson. At the time, he was living at 18 Bruton Street, London West 1, Coincidentally, Princess Elizabeth, now Queen Elizabeth, was born at 17 Bruton Street. Guy Marcus Trundle was born in New York in 1899, the son of George and Amy Trundle. His father was a minister in York, but not York minister, and he was wealthy enough to employ a nurse and two domestic servants. In 1932, Guy Trundle married Melusine Carey Barnard, 
the daughter of a retired army colonel in Paddington. The couple had a daughter, uh, Pamela, in 1937, but eventually they divorced. He met Wallace Simpson at an informal social gathering and the relationship developed from there. So obviously Guy was still w with his wife Melusine at the time. Now the report acknowledges that Wallace Simpson needed to be very careful, whereas her husband was aware of the relationship with the Prince of Wales, neither appears to have known about Guy Marcus Trundle. Wallace Simpson had met the Prince of Wales through Viscountess Thelma Furness, with whom the Prince of Wales had been having regular sexual relations, even though Thelma was married to Marmaduke Furness, the first Viscount Furness. Thelma had asked Wallace to look after him whilst she was away in the United States, but when she came back, Wallace did not want to return him. This led to unpleasant scenes between them. The prince later called her a beast. Wallace Simpson told friends that her husband was having her watched, which would have been rather pointless as he knew perfectly well what was going on. Indeed, a police report says Ernest Aldrich Simpson, who is described as a bounder, is bragging to the effect that he expects to get high honours before very long. He is very talkative when in drink. I suspect that the police here were exaggerating or even making this up. Although Ernest Simpson given up his American citizenship to become British and had fought in the British Army in World War I in the Coldstream Guards, the police no doubt regarded him as an American Jew and not the sort of person who should be associating himself with high British society. I must emphasize, of course, that this is my interpretation, but it's based on other observations of theirs. The police officers also monitored Mrs. Simpson's social circle. In the report, we learn that Lady Emerald Cunard, who was born Maud Alisberg in San Francisco in 1872, and who the, the Times described as the most lavish hostess in London, was a drug addict. She introduced Sir Oswald Mosley, leader of the British Union of Fascists, to the Prince of Wales at her home. Now, I quote directly from the report. These are not my words, they're the words of the uh, report. She is the mother of the notorious Nancy Cunard, who is very partial to coloured men and who created a sensation some years ago by taking up residence in the Negro quarter of New York. Now this, I think, really shows the racist bias of the police twisting the facts to suit their own argument. Nancy Cunard strongly believed in equal opportunities for all. She had campaigned against racial injustice in the United States and had been in a relationship with a, a black person, an American citizen, from New York whilst she was in Paris. Not exactly the twist the police were trying to put on it. Now, Lady Emerald Cunard had been of interest for some time as a possible security hazard. Many years earlier, David Lloyd George considered Lady Cunard a most dangerous woman, because although she was not interested so much in politics, she beguiled senior politicians such as Lord Curzon into indiscreet statements at her dinner table. She was a strong supporter of Wallace Simpson, perhaps hoping for some court position should she become queen, which of course wasn't going to happen anyway. She died on the 10th of July, 1948. Now, as I've already hinted, I think that this report gives us a bit of an insight into the mentality of those that served the British ruling class in the mid-1930s. The legal reason Wallace Simpson could not be queen uh, was that she was uh, divorced and Edward, as head of the Church of England, 
could not marry a divorced person. But that was not all, of course. I mean, also the uh, uh, Britain had to get permission from the Dominions to permit the, the, the wedding to go through, and this didn't come from Australia and South Africa. However, the police are trying to portray her in as black a light as possible based on what they consider to be bad. They twisted the facts around her social acquaintances and perhaps also her husband. When interviewed in 2003, the family of Guy Trundle knew nothing about Wara Simpson. They were as surprised as anyone when the files were opened up. Therefore, I'm led to believe that, or maybe not to believe, but to suspect anyway, that the police may have made the whole thing up. Maybe not uh, entirely, maybe she did know Guy Trundle in passing, but she wasn't in a relationship with him. That's possible. Anyway, what the objective of the police was, clearly, to stop the Prince of Wales marrying this American divorcee. Guy Trundle died on the 3rd of December 1958. Nancy Cunard died on the 17th of March 1965. Hope you found that interesting. I upload videos on a Friday at 8 in the evening my time, Central European time, 7 in the UK, and that's 11 in the morning in Los Angeles. If you subscribe, you'll find out when I do other things, such as the visit of the Edward and Wallace to Nazi Germany in 1937, which I haven't finished yet, but I will be doing at a later date. My specialization, of course, is in the Second World War, uh, Nazi regime and the Holocaust. So this is really a bit of a one-off. Thanks for listening.